All right, today we're gonna go check out another Epic Home Studio. Now, I will say, this home studio is a whole new take on Epic Home Studios. So basically the studio is owned by this company and they bought this house and converted 90% plus of the house into a full-fledged Epic recording studio. Now there's an A room and a B room, a bunch of booths. They both got big Rupert Neat 58 consoles. And I mean, it is the definition of an Epic home studio with still a super comfortable lounge that is like a living room and a house. And then there's actual lodging bedroom for uh, clients to use. The production company that built this studio and owns it also owns a venue that all shares the same property. It's this huge venue. It's out of control. Very inspiring for someone like me. I love the concept of like a shared space that just is like next level, but still in technically in a residence. So it has that sort of homey kind of feeling when you're there. The studio is called Spectra Sound Studios. There's a link to it down below if you guys wanna follow them and check it out yourself. Or if you're in the Austin area and you wanna book some time, reach out to them, book some time. Go check them out. Thank you guys for inviting us so we can come and go through all the gear. Let me know some of your favorite parts of this studio down in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe of course. And thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video as well as all of the other studio tours. Sweetwater just sent me over this Telefunken TF51 large diaphragm tube condenser microphone. And I mean, it's Telefunken. This thing is super sweet. I've tried it so far on acoustic guitar and on vocals, and it is just buttery smooth. Sounds so good. So if you guys wanna check out the mic yourself, there's a link to it down in the description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. Now let's go check out Spectra Sound Studios. I'm Charlie Kramsky, and this is Spectra Sound. Wow. This is our uh, lounge, kind of kitchen hang area. This is so uh, excessive and wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we like, uh, yeah, big bold colors and pretty yeah. craftsman look. I mean, the whole place was built by us. Everything you'll see is pretty craftsman the whole way. Uh, two room facility, two different control rooms, which we'll see as we walk through. Like, what is this? How did it start? <laughs> so, Lightstream Media is a company that owns basically a venue next door. It's a 2000 cap venue. Um, and this house was on the property and it was the green room for the venue. And uh, one thing led to another and they were like, let's build a recording studio inside the house. Um, so, with the help of Monarch Builders and BAI Acoustics, we. Uh, you know, did some brains plus science and put together a studio. It's a cool hang. Yeah. Uh, this big, you got like a little office kind of set up over here. People need to. Yeah, yeah, we've got, uh, you know, people need to work. It's sometimes employees are doing work. There's like a, a little, another office that we have a, a video team. So there's like a video. It's a mess right now, but uh, a couple people office out of here and do video work and. Dang. And other things like that. It just keeps going. <laughs> it goes on forever. This yeah. is great, dude in-house video production? Yeah, yeah, because we've got, you know, we shoot shows and shoot in-studio content and have a whole bunch of content like that. So the band's clients can hang out here. You got a big old kitchen. Yeah, and this is dedicated to just studio. There's a green room still for the stage band. So this is studio, green, uh, studio hang over here. Yeah, it's designed really well, really pretty. You'll see there's like a bunch of hidden doors everywhere. Like this is a bookshelf that's got a hidden door to some offices this way. Oh, yes. <laughs> That goes on forever. Okay, so this is like an old garage yep. conversion. Yep. So what's the story uh, with the house as far as like the whole house is basically dedicated to the studio? So yeah, probably like 80% of the house is for the studio. And then there's a like a master bedroom, master bathroom, showers, big closet. That's a green room for the headliner next door. So when there's a show, they'll come over. That's their hang, they've got bathrooms and they can shower. And then um, there's one person that lives on site also on the other wing of the house that um, kind of looks over the place and wow. keeps it residential and yeah. That's great. Yeah. What's, uh, are these all your things on the wall so here? These are a combination of me and Steve Shady. Steve Shady's an engineer here too that has the second room. Um, so it's some of his records and some of our, uh, some of my stuff. Steve's uh, Willie Nelson's engineer. That's his thing that he's done for the past 25 years or so. Oh my gosh. Wow. This is our uh, insane mini, mini man hours control room. Uh, everything you see here was done by us. So all these acoustic panels, each of these were cut and stuffed and wrapped and stapled for hours and hours and hours. Preston from Monarch Builders was the guy that, you know, 
give us, you know, he's the one that wanted to do these individual boxes as opposed to just putting it flat and putting shapes on top of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, getting into it and getting through it all was quite an ordeal, but totally worth it now that it's done. I wish I could tell you how many different fabric colors we went through to, <laughs> to, to get it. Because the wall was originally just a, like a, we, we still need to finish this off. The studio isn't done. We still have more to do, more gear to buy, more things to finish, but what studio doesn't? Yeah, <laughs> what studio's no, ever done? Going. So this was the color of the wall that they painted it before all this was up and we just loved that color. We're like, yeah. well, let's find a fabric that matches that in a way. Um, and then, yeah, we love, you know, the whole wood thing, the wood vibe, so. Um, Man, it's a, it's a cool color palette. Yeah, that's all Sarah, our marketing director, Sarah, just would come up with a color or an idea and we're all like, oh, that's, no, that's crazy. And then she was always right. Everything looks so good. It's Feels rare that studio guys know how to pick this kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> and like even this diffuser, I told Preston, I I just, you always see the same diffusers. Can we do something oh, different? Yeah. So he's made, had this crazy idea for a diffuser and we asked the acoustic designer, does it need to be the math or can we just randomize it? And he green lighted just, just make it random. And then you got this big, beautiful console here. Big, beautiful console. Oh my God. 32 channel, 5088. Um, the Neve people are good friends with us. They're out in Wimberley, so they're about an hour away and kind of known them forever. And yeah, seemed like a, uh, seemed like a good choice. We, you know, would have loved. Yeah, pretty good choice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, we were debating, like I saw an old 8068 for sale. I used to work at Avatar in New York and we had an 8068 that I just loved. And yeah. um, just thought about the maintenance on it. And uh, yeah, exactly. there we had, you know, three full-time techs around the clock that could repair it. Now it's like, I want something that just works, so. Yeah, um, I mean, this, um, I don't know how many people watching this are familiar with the Rupert Neve stuff, but these Shelford channels, these are all Shelford channels, right? Yep, yep. Are so, so good. I mean, it is, if you can just get like a stereo pair of them in a rack, yeah. you know, you're winning. Yeah. Getting a whole desk meter bridge and everything. How's it been using it so far? It's great, love it. Uh, I came up on the large format console, so I love having faders and all that, and it's it's great. I mean, takes everything well and is big and just great. What is that, artist mix in the middle there? Yep. For Pro Tools and... Yep. Are you guys in Pro Tools or are you guys doing like... Pro Tools, yeah. Cubase? Or? No, Pro Tools here. Um, that's my comfort level. Fruity Loops? <laughs> yeah, I mean, to each their own, there's no right or wrong, but I just, screw up the least in Pro Tools. I know it, and so that's, yeah. that's just where my comfort level is. These are great speakers too, these ATCs. Which which models are these? These are 12s, SCM12s. They're running on a Bryston amp. I really like, I really just like a closed box. I think eventually we'll upgrade to a little bit bigger boys for the size of the room. These were just mine that, before I worked here I was freelance and I would just go to studios and these were the easiest to take around town. Sure, yeah. Um, and then Planes. paired it with a, a sub. Um, kind of finishes out what these guys don't naturally have. So how do you guys like to use this thing? Are you, is it all inputs typically? Yeah, for the most the board? Yeah, so the most part like faders feed to Pro Tools. And then um, if we're doing a show from the stage, um, we'll have Dante, we have Rupert Neve Dante Pre's that come over here. And then that feeds to the console, to the line inputs. And then we'll wow. multi-track off of that. So we'll dump it off of Dante, multi-track it through the console. Uh, and then do a broadcast mix and then we've got, you know, multi-tracks to the console and a broadcast mix ready to go. We've got a 500 foot fiber cable that goes to the venue that connects the two. So you guys have this venue that is not attached to the house, but it's on the property. Yeah, it's like a complex. It's, it's you know, on the other side of the parking lot. Um, and we dug a long, long fiber cable and connected the two. Let's say you have a band playing a show over there. You can pull it all up in here and record like a molt of it? Yeah, so we'll take a split on the stage so it can still go to front of house. And then we've got out here these, um, they're just here now for climate control, but we'll roll these um, Rupert Neve Dante boxes over there. So we have 32 channels of pre's that sit side stage, and then you control it through an app here oh my God. over Dante. So we'll control the gain staging. It's got high pass, phantom, all that, which we wouldn't use phantom for the split, but, um, and so I control my own levels here and then it feeds it. It goes Dante to a, a switcher that switches it to fiber. Fiber shoots it all the way over here, and we take it back to Dante. Goes into the Galaxy, dumps on the console God. with the push of a button. This little Galaxy is cool. There's a there's a preset that's studio mode and then venue mode. So I just saved a profile. So when I hit the second button, uh, it just loads up and it's ready for the the venue to feed me. They're great. I mean, there's so much comes in that little box. And and so there's and there's two studios here. So the other studio has the same thing. So if this studio is booked for a session, we can do the same thing in the other room. We can oh just take it right over there. 
And if both rooms are booked, then you just record it on a laptop and dump it on the console later. What was like the order of, because theoretically you would have had to have thought of that before you even really laid out the rooms, right? Uh, so we had network cable going everywhere already. Um, and then what happened is we had a show at the venue that was um, Vanilla Ice. It was like a I Love the 90s thing. And they wanted to, Coolio was on the bill, but no he way. passed away before it. So Aww. they wanted to multi-track and live stream. So we, you know, we tried to figure out a way to do it. And we ran, you know, a 500 foot analog snake all oh the way God. over and how to split here. And it went great. I mean, these pre's were quiet, it was great. And then we we're like, all right, this was a cool thing. How do we offer this more often, but not have to buy a $20,000, $30,000 cable. cable. And so these um, Rupert Neve pre's we have out here over, or over Dante, we had to bury one line and um, gives, gives us everything we need. Now it's like, when a band green lights the multi-track, it's just a couple buttons and we take splits off the stage and we're ready to roll. But you guys already had like the rooms, like the building was, for the most part already put together when you figured out the Dante thing? Oh yeah, yeah, that was definitely like, this is something we wanna do, let's figure out how to do it. Yeah, but but there was network, for, uh, Brian had the uh, the foresight to put network cabling everywhere. So even yeah. when you're out there, there's there's ethernet ports high. So if you wanna do like a PZM cam or, or what oh, is it, yeah. PTZ, I forget what they're called. Yeah, PTZ. But, yeah, but, and also over one of the other, I forget, I think there's six strands of fiber. And so basically we can shoot eventually uh, ProRes 4K over there, yeah. send it over fiber and capture at a video room over here and not capture locally is the yeah. ultimate goal. So, And there's network ports network ports everywhere. Like everywhere you look, there's network ports. How many channels are on this? 32? 32, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. But there's like, I think there's 80 lines. I mean, this is like, it's of a rat, because we're not done cleaning things up yet, but all the uh, audio lines come back here and it's a rat's nest right now because we're still getting through stuff. but. I think there's 80 lines, like audio lines from the studio. Yeah. And then there's probably similar numbers up oh in the machine God. room of network lines. Sweet. Let's uh, check out more <laughs> the rest of the space. Yeah. All right. We got a nice booth here. This is a big booth. You could probably put a little kit in here. Yep. We've done it. The idea is that we wanted a place where we could put a live room kit. Medium booth kit and a small booth and, and get away with it. Uh, so this is, uh, we refer to it as the vibe booth, um, just because of this wallpaper, all soundboard, and this is all reclaimed wood just to give it a little touch of, yeah. Yeah, some, we, we love hidden doors as I mentioned. So there's like- Oh my God, look at that. Hidden closet. That is so cool. Yeah, just to store stuff, why not? I like, I like how you went about building these little diffuser things too. Like this is a pretty simple Yeah, all reclaimed. Yeah, all, it was all scrap wood. We're like, we need, the way we usually operate is when something comes up, we get to the finish line because of it. So we had fastball coming in and I booked, I'd worked with them forever. And I booked the days in advance thinking like, oh, we, we just need a booth, we, we can get it done. And we got to this point and then it was just like this black wall and we're like, let's just, you know, dress it up a little bit with these vertical slats, didn't really change. The thing that took the longest to do is, um, when this was when we gutted the whole place and we were taping out the rooms was finding like where every window was going gonna mm -hmm. go so yeah, like there's a lot of windows if you stand here and look out i'll move so you can slide in um if you look out these three windows here each uh -huh. of them look into the booth where a player would be so no matter where you are at all times you can see everyone it's all it's definitely like focused on being a track a band tracking studio yeah this is crazy booths fit everyone people can see each other so you can track ton of people like whatever you plan for your budget you got to like triple <laughs> quadruple estimate because yeah you're like yeah we'll put windows in and you're like oh well we got to do the double yes and then we need them all cut to a specific yes size and then we need yeah. space in between them and well let's put the fabric in there too uh, yeah all that and then you and then there's a the moment of like cleaning the window a thousand times before you seal it because yeah. if you seal it and there's something a smudge in there it's there forever yeah we actually had a couple of our big windows out there that were too big and we had to take them to get cut down <laughs> so that oh they fit. Oh my God. Yeah, all these doors, like, you know, we had plans for different types of doors and then we came across these and, you know, the framing actually was for a smaller door. So we reframed so that we could get these bigger doors in. So oh that was, I God. mean, every step of it's an ordeal, but I mean, it's always just, you know, the juice was worth the squeeze. Having these doors for the price we got them for was totally worth it. So, and mm -hmm. the big window and everything. Uh, Preston, our, our GC, saw how these magnetic seals worked. Yeah. And basically he's like, oh, I can, I can, do a version of that so all of our solid cores do the same uh, magnetic closing system that these do oh, too. Oh yeah, that's Kind of just stole the idea. What is this, the big central? Yeah. String room? Main tracking, drums, strings, whatever you want to do in here. Wow, dude, this is super nice. Nice big, lots of light. 
God, this is incredible. I mean, the height, the shape of the room, and then uh, what I'm noticing are the, like the air returns. There's a, we haven't hooked it up yet, but it was built so that we have this carbon uh, filtration system. So if someone wants to smoke whatever they want to smoke in the control room, <laughs> it filters it and it yeah. flips the room's air in 30, 30 seconds. Oh so it's like gosh. a clean room essentially. Yeah, um, Eric, that is nice. Eric's the, the ringleader of all this and it was his, he got obsessed and he had this idea of like, you know, these, these um, clean rooms. And so he went down the deep dive of figuring out how to do it, so. And then these massive ducts, yeah, I mean, the, hair, the air trickles in, but so it keeps everything nice and cool and there's returns everywhere. What are these, like, base trap kind of things that you've built? Just movable gobos. Movable gobos, these yeah. are big, cool shapes. Yeah, and so these, these ones are a little smaller, easier to move, and you can stack them so you can build like a little booth yeah, if you want, however you want to cool. do it. Yeah, pretty effective. And then is that back wall kind of more absorptive? Yeah. Yeah, we just put that up a couple days ago. So it's gonna get fabric on top of it and prettied up. But yeah, that's just oh, cool. uh, soundboard, uh, sound select um, uh, uh, absorptive material. All right, so how many booths do we have here? There's, we went into this booth. That's, yeah, the that's one. Booth, what, is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah, for lack of, well, just because of the wallpaper. It's yeah. a crazy wallpaper. Um, yeah, so this is another, you know, there's pass-throughs for amps and everything like that, amps and instrument lines, but there's a little wow. smaller booth. Look at this, you guys went all out. <laughs> I just, I mean, as someone who's built, and you know, I've never hired someone to build stuff in my room. I just had, it's ter terrifying looking at all the work you've yeah, done. Yeah, this is, yeah, and this is all us. My idea was that if you did a jazz record, you need a booth for upright bass, so this would be a big enough one for that. So the next booth's a little smaller, but, yeah. Um, but again, sight lines, if you come here, you can see straight down through that booth, through the hallway to the far booth. You see, oh, it, yeah. It looks like a black curtain, but, if the drummer's in there, the bass player can see the drummer from right here. So this was the original flooring. We um, we sanded it down, but Preston, the GC, had this crazy idea of like, let's leave the original floor. And then th there was, you know, this was a different, this was a wall. There was, this was a whole other section of the house. And um, he just had this idea of like, let's put tile down and honeycomb it. And through construction, we didn't cover it. We left it, he said to everyone, just if something scuffs up the floor or drops and like, just leave you know, it. Just leave it. It's part of the character. I mean, we, this, it's Craftsman. We built it. Just let it be what it is. And small little booth, some lines. Every every booth and every panel has um, amp level that goes to the control room. So if you got a head, you can put an amp somewhere or the cab somewhere. And they all probably have like a bit of a different character to them. Yeah. Sound wise. Yeah. I mean, these these little ones, I just wanted to be as dead as possible. Yeah. Uh, I'll get the character in other rooms. I, I want isolation. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is you know an unpretty closet, but eventually. We'll put mics there and then we'll build a little shelf and a, like a guitar cab little yeah. thing. And so that when you close the store, it seals and you can have one more spot to put a cab if you need to. Upright piano. Wow, another one of these walls. <laughs> yeah. Super special. So this is kind of keyboard world-ish or drum yeah. booth, whatever. Uh, Rhodes Mark II. Enough uh, mic lines in here to put a kit. And is it, this is like a raised floor, right? Yes, everything except for the main room is decoupled, raised, double room in a room in a room in a room and yeah. all that. Uh, so that's the only one that's the real floor. Everything else is floated. And then you got an upright here. Yeah, a little spin it. Uh, we have a, next week, um, there's a Yamaha six footer arriving. Ooh. That's gonna be on loan in a B3, so that'll be fun. Uh, this is Steve Shady's room. So we've got the control room there. We jokingly call this the out of control room because it's pretty <laughs> pretty crazy in oh, here. Oh yeah, dude. Cosmic vibes in here, man. <laughs> All those tubes keeping this room I nice know. and warm. I need to drop the AC. Um, yeah, another 5088. This is Steve's personal collection. Uh, but when he's not here, it's our B room, so we can do mixing or tracking. There's, you know, still the window to the whole tracking. It's wired up for, yeah. so you can track a band in here or in there or do the uh, broadcast mix in here, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. That's great. You got the another Galaxy. Yep, on Dante, so it connects to the venue. Is that 192 for headphones or something? Uh, so he just got this. So this was residual, and I think he just uses it for uses it for additional outputs. But yeah, another 32. This is this is smaller because there's like um, that one has like an extra center section, right? Yeah, yeah. Over there is a uh, producer desk, so nice. no center section here. And then these are, what, ATC 25s? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, these are cool. These would probably be great for that other space yeah, too. I tried are you make, thinking bigger than yeah, that? Yeah, I've tried those over there, they're good. And then we had um, an engineer that brought some 45s over and it was just the right 
size, considering we're not gonna have soffit mounts and not mains, it was yeah. the right size for that room that could fill the room, but still sound great, I mean. Nice uh, collection of shelfer extra shelfer More channels shelfer. over here. Yeah, I think we have 100 Rupert Neve Pre's in, in house. Oh my Between his studio God. and our and our stage boxes and the other studio. And I asked Josh, the, the uh, GM at Rupert Neve, if we have the most, and he says that Fish takes 116 on tour with them. <laughs> So we just need 17 mic pre's to get the title. Oh my gosh. Man, great stuff over here. Very Mew, compressor, bunch of Audioscape. I just got some Audioscape Pultex and- uh, Nice. Yeah, they're their great. bus comp. Oh, cool. Four more. He actually has another one that's out for repair that's coming back to Oh no, he has a um, Universal Audio 1176 that's uh, getting repaired. What is this? Is this SSL up here? The uh, Smart C2. That's fun, man. I would love to have four 1176s. Mm -hmm. Or five, I five, guess. Five, yeah. Five patch bays. <laughs> yeah. He's got his burls, his... Uh, oh, yeah, the b 2 All his two-bus stuff over here. B2 bombers. There's the portico. Have you used that much? Oh, yeah. Love that thing. You said you go to an external, right? When you're tracking, like, mm -hmm. out of Pro Tools? Mm -hmm. Do you ever throw anything on that? Uh, usually I have, like, uh, if I really want to throw something on, I'd do the insert and just monitor off like a pair of channels on the console. Oh yeah. And then just do like a two bus thing if I needed to. We've also got the Rupert Neve master bus converter. So a lot of times I'll monitor the return of that. Yeah. Cause that's got its final limiter and some silk and some other fun stuff. Yeah. Usually that's my, the last kiss before playback. Yeah, console. exactly. And then back there just takes us back to the lounge. Yeah, back out to the lounge this way. Full circle, what's up guys? <laughs> Well, dude, thank you so much for uh, having us out and yeah. showing us around. Of course, thanks for coming. Um, what is, where can people find this place? Can, can they book it, follow, all that stuff? Yeah, there is a website we just launched that maybe I can give you the link to because I don't know it offhand. Okay, yeah, I'll, <laughs> put, I'll put, put it down in the description. <laughs> um, but yeah, all, all contact information's on there and it's bookable and all that, so. Awesome, and then on uh, Instagram, is it Lightstream Media? Lightstream.media? Yeah, livestream.media. Stream. .media. Okay, cool. I'll put all that stuff down in the description. Uh, everyone can go follow, book stuff. I'm sure there'll be an email or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it, man. We'll see you in the next one. Cool. Thanks. Bye.